you're coming too. Join us as we grow from a building channel to a sailing channel. One day we'll be floating in the tropics and I'll be drinking a margarita. Our heading is set south and our home-built boat is getting us there. Can't wait to show you guys. We're Salt and Tar and this is our life. We're happy to share and thanks for watching. We just got back from a trip to the States and we brought two light wind sails and a whole lot of boat stuff home with us. Now that we have a fresh six months on our travel visa and a successful haul of supplies, we're set to sail and work through the summer here in Mexico. Garrett's starting with replacing a lot of our three-strand line and running halyards for our new-to-us spinnakers. I'm just about to go up the rigging and run my two spinnaker halyards or spare halyards for head sails. Got new half-inch spool line right here. I actually put my harness on, <laughs> um, mainly because I did a workout at an actual gym for the first time in I have no idea how long, a couple days ago, and I am so sore, it's kind of sad, but my leg muscles are not doing too well, so I figure I should probably clip in. Um, but this is gonna be my new halyard, the new block for the new halyard. And I had to do a little bit of Frankenstein work to get something that'll work for the halyard, as usual. I only had one block that is a like a free spinning block, this block, it's fixed right here, so it can't spin. So I'm attaching it to this swivel. It's a nice stout swivel so that it can spin up at the top of the mast. I've got it seized. Fortunately for the other side, I have a, a block that's already swiveling, so it'll be easy. Every time I sit still for a while, I think it's so stiff. Oh. Okay, all right. Okay, this is gonna be the new spinnaker halyard. Which I'm excited for because I actually managed to find a couple old spinnakers on the trip back to California. Put a loop on the end of the halyards and just do a, uh, a seizing to hold them instead of a bowl in like this, so it'll just be less bulky. Clean things up a little bit. I'm doing a racking seizing for this. The only difference between a regular seizing and a racking seizing is on a racking seizing on the first row, you do a figure eight around, and then you do your regular pass on the second one. After finishing the two additional halyards, Garrett moved on to making two additional attachment points for our main preventer. I've been thinking for a while it'd be nice to have a couple spots further forward. He also switched out the three strand line, which didn't play nice with the cam cleat on the block. The next attachment point will be four stanchions up and allow the boom out further for downwind sailing. We're getting close on the little re-rigging project for all the running rigging. I just dropped the Yankee and ran new sheets. 
for that. Now running up a new halyard. The three strand is just not working. It's uh, I can't get the twist out of it. So every time I hoist it up, it it just starts to twist so badly. And then I have to climb up the ratlins and untwist it while I'm hoisting. Once I get it up there, I can get tension on it so I can use the sail, but I'm not really okay with leaving it that way because it's a potential hazard because if it gets twisted up really tight, then I can't always drop the sail. I'm not gonna replace any of the other halyards or the topping lifts for the mainsail. Those are all fine because, well, the topping lifts aren't on block and tackle. They're just a single up and down. So that's no issues there. That runs fine. This is a staysail halyard, same deal, no block and tackle, um, or it's just a single, single block. So no issues. The main halyards, the throat and the peak halyards for the main, those run totally fine. They're um, 5 eighths line, and that doesn't seem to keep as much twist in it. And the blocks that I have for that are actually made for three strand line, they're old. Um, big wooden blocks so the three strand runs fine same with the main sheet that uh those are some old blocks that i salvaged off some old uh alden yawl i believe um that was getting crushed in a boat yard the mizzen halyards could i could replace those but they're not too bad they're not giving me too much trouble plus i won't have enough three eights to do those so i'm kind of prioritizing the three eights i'll have to end up getting more yeah i've already blown through probably 400 at least 400 feet a half inch and this will probably be the end of my three eighth inch i got 500 feet of, of half inch and i only got 250 of three eighths I should have got 500 to 3 eighths as well, but oh well, this is still a hell of a lot better than nothing. Once we do our boat yard stop, the idea is to put the boat in a slip and rent out a space in the boat yard so I can set up my saw horses and get all my tools and everything and I can just build stuff for the boat. And if I do that, I want to build a full on like downwind rig for the boat, twin poles, um, with all the block and tackle set up for it. Then there's a bunch of things uh, I want to do. Some sort of bimini structure on the stern. Might raise the mizzen mass. I want to build a dinghy. Uh, the list goes on and on. Um, another pair of another pair of chain plates for a aft set of shrouds for the main mast because I need to have better tension aft so I can keep my head soles, my, uh, my stays up forward so I can actually keep those under tension and not have the luff of the head sails sag out. Another set of chain plates a little further aft for the running backs so I can bring those running backs forward because right now they're just a complete pain. Uh, the setup what, that we have now is never meant to be permanent. It was a temporary setup until I got the permanent one done, but there's just, there's so much stuff to do that it's just remained like that the entire time. But it's given me time to really figure out exactly how I want to do it, which is nice. But yeah, now I'm just rambling on and getting way ahead of myself. I'm going to get back to the rigging project. Okay, I got my 3 8 duct taped to the old one. So I'll just use the old one to run the new one through. Here's a moment of truth to see if this will hoist without getting super twisted like the last one. So far, so good. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. Great success with the Yankee. Everything went smooth. I kind of tacked it back and forth a couple times and it just runs so much smoother. My whole goal with changing all the running rigging and doing all these little things after we've after we've been sailing the boat this whole time, I've I've figured out a lot of the little little inconveniences and where lines catch or you know, etc. So for the Yankee, I think the last thing in getting it set up so everything runs smooth on each side of the pin rails right here this groove likes to catch the lines and they get stuck in there i've got a bunch of sheet copper stored on the boat so 
I'm just gonna cut a piece of copper and secure it across here. Got the copper. Just take that out of the sun because that's getting really hot. Round the edges off a little bit. Projects small and big require the same, finishing. Seizing a clip onto the end of the staysail boom, aka whisker pole, aka spinnaker pole, is a small one, but equally as satisfying to cross off the list. Next project, I'm throwing together a little preventer for the mizzen. We've just had a scrap line that we've had attached to the boom and whenever we need to prevent it, we just cleat that off down on the bulwarks and it works fine, but it's just a little inconvenient. So splice this little guy up. Um, I still need to trim the, the tails. This will connect on the bottom of a little block and tackle. This loop fits right around that little horn right there on the bulwarks. And then on top of this, it'll have uh, a little cam cleat. Okay, here's the finished product. That little spliced, whatever you call it, doohickamajiggy. Just slips right around here. That holds nicely there. I've got my block and tackle. I just seized that on and that goes up to the boom. Quick release piece here that I can take on and off. I ran out of the new 3 8 but this piece is long enough and it'll do. Sweet, well, I'm taking things off the list. That feels good. The goal is just to make the boat easier, more efficient to sail, and then, sail more. <laughs>
and if they haven't been refrigerated after they've been laid, then you don't need to refrigerate them and they last actually really long, as long as you keep them out of the sunlight, uh, really long without refrigeration. So we've also found we don't really use our oven and it is the perfect egg storage. spot we know that we'll be coming back in about a week but I think we'll come back multiple times this was a really cool spot and the marina was super nice the people are super friendly the showers are amazing having access to a pool and a hot tub oh it's like my favorite thing is just to sit by the pool and read a book <laughs> in the shade it's nice when Garrett's been doing projects on the boat. I can just kind of get off and cool down. All right, let's go find Reed. Reed and Aaron both have had, been having luck on the spoon lately. So I just picked one up, see get anything. We set the gym and strictly sail as soon as possible. New and improved tiller preventers. <laughs> Dig my jiggies. Yeah, that. And look at this nice line. Ooh. Garrett's got Charles up and running. Oh man, it has been exactly four weeks since we've been out here. So this feels really nice. Escondido is on the inside there. You can kind of see this dip and then a mound and then a dip. Those are the two windows from Escondido. So we've come out from behind there. Our heading for today changed many times in our search for Imua, who had a head start on wherever we were going. But the beauty of never being in a rush and being allergic to plans is the experience of the journey. We hoisted more sail when the wind beckoned and enjoyed the triumph of just being out here. The wind was almost light enough to try out our new spinnaker. All you have to do to make the wind come back is rig up the spinnaker. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit bummed that we couldn't raise the spinnaker. <laughs> like, I'm happy for the wind, for sure. Super stoked. But we've yet to hoist any of them up, either of them up. Yeah, I was getting a little giddy. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. This is nice. We're doing four about four and a half knots consistently, 4.4, 4.6. Even with a bearded lady. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Red Aviva has been cruising for a solid year and is way past her annual haul out. She may be rocking a beard, but the haul is holding up great. A brotherly exchange of trades is about to take place to give her a close shave, to gain some speed back and withstand another few months of sailing before a haul out is expedient. It's been a change of plans throughout today. <laughs> yeah, well, and very ch a lot of changes in wind. Yeah. We had just little wind, then we had good wind, then we had no wind, now we have good wind. What a great way to celebrate getting off the mooring ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a beautiful sail. Yeah. 
is nice. Mm. And she's making really good speed for light winds. Yeah. I mean, it's super flat, calm, so that helps, but she's doing good. 23 days sober today, my love. Oh, snap. <laughs> 23 days sober. Holy shit. I feel like I'm enjoying this in a completely new way. Yeah. Yeah, much better way. Because we're actually enjoying sailing. We're not just enjoying being hammered and <laughs> also sailing after being hammered. Sailing with beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Copious amounts of said beer. <laughs> One day we'll sit and come up with exactly what we want to say. <laughs> yeah. But right now, it's just nice to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. mm. We've made a decision, and like most decisions we make, it is in the moment, and right for right now. Our rendezvous anchorage was V Cove on Isla Carmen, but the wind carried us as far as Belandra. Up next, we sail from Belandra around the corner and up to V Cove. Get buzzed by some rumbustious sailors and explore the many caves that make this spot magical. Majestic like a walrus. <laughs> I'm making a nature document. Oh, good, good. <laughs> if you like the video, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing so we can see you next week. How's your microphone? Look how nice it even has a cool blue light. Oh snap. It's amazing. Moving up in the world. Yeah. We can start a podcast now. Oh. I'll get my podcast voice on. Is that your podcast voice? It's my mom. <laughs> it's going to be a sexy podcast. <laughs> it's a real sexy. Let's talk phones. Ding on this guy. Ah, it's windy. So. How dare that other boat be in our way? Let me film you. You look cute. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to do that all day. <laughs> got weird. Yeah. Yeah. It got weird.